Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a, an accomplished young entrepreneur from Chennai, India, Mr. Gino Manikam Raj. Gino, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, glad to thank you. Gino is the co-founder and chief technical officer of Medisim VR. So, uh, Gino, before we talk about medicine, tell me about your own journey in brief and a little bit about medicine. All right. So, I started started my career as a game developer first. Okay. Uh, from my very young age, uh, actually, I was very fortunate to have access to PCs when mm -hmm. I was really young. My dad is a chemical engineer, but for some reason, he bought a PC and we had it at home. So, I had to meddle with it. And I was very intrigued by how these games work. You know, they open up a different reality. Uh, it's active. It's interactive. Uh, we make the decisions mm -hmm. about the movies. Uh, and I was very, very, very curious about what happens behind the box. Mm -hmm. That led to getting into games development. Uh, I have tried multiple times since my. I mean, you wouldn't believe since my eighth grade, I've been trying to make one game. Okay. And it took. Almost eight to ten years to get to the place where I understood how to make a game. Right. So I did some coding. I got my diploma in C C plus plus back in when I was in eighth ninth grade wow. because uh, that's that was my first exposure. You know, uh, training uh, a training company called C S C used to be very famous back in the days. Hmm. They came into my school and they spoke about programming and I was like, okay, maybe this is how I need to go. So I went and did the course, finished it in two years. Then I did uh, Java and J two E. Yeah, because they, there used to be a lot of Java games back then on mm -hmm. mobile phones. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was never able to understand how the visuals and the logic went together. Mm -hmm. I was very young. Yeah. Yeah. So from, from there, uh, uh, when I did my UG is when I got a little bit more maturity and understanding of how things work. And then I was able to make my first game when, I, when Android was very new. Mm -hmm. uh, I about when Android was uh, released. Uh, that was very interesting. It was open source and Google gave very clear guidelines to how to make things. Hmm. And that made my life easier and I learned and I was studying, I made my first game and that went really well. Uh, got a few lakhs of downloads back then. Uh, I also made some money out of it. <laughs> okay. so, uh, so this is how it started. And then nice. I had a couple of mates who were helping me make this happen when I was in college. Hmm. So we three together started a gaming company called Hybro Interactive. As soon as we finished our uh, UG, so we never had any work experience. We all had offers from CTS before, but we all felt, okay, let, let us do this. Let's try doing this. And that's how uh, the gaming journey started. Amazing. Amazing. So from there uh, to VR, again, there's another shift. You know, Once we figured out gaming a little bit, once we got comfortable, virtual reality was again new back in 2013. And uh, we thought we should somehow do something for this because the fundamental development pipeline for both games and VR is very, very similar. Hmm. But the output is drastically different, and the application is drastically different. Hmm. That, again, interested me a lot, and I went in and done did a lot of research. Uh, we were one of the first uh, to launch products hmm. using VR in India, Singapore. Hmm. We actually had a simulator in Sentosa in Singapore mm -hmm. back then. Uh, so I mean, it was a very very interesting journey. Fantastic. But again, again, we hit a spot where you know, what do we do using VR? You know, we kept doing projects for multiple industries like automobile, oil and gas, entertainment, welding, hard skills. But we had to do a lot of learning and unlearning. Mm. You know, I had to be a welding expert to first simulate a welding. So oh. understanding the temperatures, metallurgy, angle of attack, the speed at which they weld, we had to do all that. And then we'll have to unlearn everything and then move on to automobile. Amazing. Uh, so that led to us to think, you know, if we are going to do something in VR, let's focus on one thing. Mm and be the best at doing that one thing. Mm. And that's when Dr. Adit uh, met us and we thought, okay, let's do medicine VR. We'll only focus on healthcare training using VR and be the best at it. Amazing. And as they say, the rest is history. Well done. Uh, so, Gino, my question, first question we get, you know, when we talk about medicine is what key factors do you consider when creating a game to ensure it resonates with the intended audience. Okay. So 
that's an that's an excellent question i mean uh, uh being a game developer each developer has a fundamental reason or a drive to make a game hmm. i see a lot of developers including me who develop games for based on our own experiences you know what we have played uh, it's more like you know we play a game and we feel like you know what this could have been better hmm. so i'm going to take that responsi- responsibility up and i'm going to do that hmm. that's great when you do it with passion but when you look at the industry when you work as a business that is not the best way to move forward about it right so then things change then then that question your question makes more sense uh, who are your target audience why are you making this who's going to enjoy this hmm. and we have i mean not just our games even uh, games made by big publishers have very beautiful stories on hmm. understanding their users uh, a great example would be farmwell right uh, they did a research uh, understanding who is the most engaged user and what they found was they are all elderly people in the us hmm. and mostly women okay and they were very curious how and why and they tried to invite tens of people and i interview them asking why do you play our games so much mm. mm. would like to understand mm. and the answers were very interesting mm-hmm. most of them said we used to live in farms mm. now i don't hear those noises cow cow noises birds chirping so i love i play this game because i can listen to all of this incredible and another lady said uh, i miss my grandchildren mm. here in, in farm will you have very a characters who are children like you know they say can you help me with this can you help me with that and that the connection these people have with these games you know is immense even as developers sometimes we fail to understand how the ga- how much the game is important for the user mm. how much more it is important for them than for us right it's a beautiful uh, journey and a beautiful understanding which we get as we move forward mm. amazing amazing so my logical next question is and given the amount of research you are doing with your uh, users how do you balance technical innovation with user experience yeah g- g- gaming is one of the very unique fields where creativity and technology should work together mm. you can't be overly creative and you know reduce the amount of technology you use or you can't say i am a tech company and i'm not going to have creativity mm. there needs to be a very good balance mm. and in our context here i am the te- technology person right and we have creative people who fight with me every day mm. so there's a push and pull happening here every day right and when we try to deliver it to the users we can take our train simulators as an example here mm. we look at areas where how technology can take it to the next level uh, for example we have a very good signaling system mm. inside the which might even work for real world it's as good okay. mm. so people love when they believe the game really works mm. um, the more you convince them that this is close to reality the more they enjoy the experience the more they forget that they are actually in a virtual world mm. and they believe okay this world really works if mm. i stop here another train is going to come mm. if i honk something happens mm. if i don't stop at the right place something happens right so that's where technology comes into making things more realistic making things more uh, scalable also mm. that's another point uh, without technology we can't scale as we scale uh, it be it train simulators or truck simulators uh, i mean there this is this a clear uh, advantage you get competitive edge you get when your technology is up there mm. for example when we did our first train simulator that was back in 2016 mm. uh, we started with four cities in it because we had to build build these cities hand handcraft these cities mm-hmm. uh, today when we released our proxim letter this year beginning uh, we had around 100 cities on by the day day it released because we are using generative algorithms generative ais yeah yeah so technology makes a huge huge difference in terms mm-hmm. of how are built and also how users perceive our game mm-hmm. but you know uh, you developed the indian train simulator and you just spoken a little bit about it what were can you talk a little bit about some of the insights in the development that made it so incredibly successful that that, that was a what do you say a pivotal point for us for all yeah. of us so when we developed our first train simulator 
that was not indian train simulator the first train simulator we did was euro train simulator mm. by the time i was doing my masters in the uk mm. doing uh, high performance computing mm. that is game engine design is what i was doing newcastle mm. and the team was here so uh, we were still working together to get things done mm. and we did a tra- game called euro train simulator so this train uh, this game was focused on germany italy france uk and it was instantly a huge hit and we were topping charts in all these countries mm. what we noticed was all, almost 60 50 to 60% of users were indians okay that was really interesting i mean we made a game for europe mm. and we see 50% plus plus indians in it mm. and some of them being vocal asking for an indian version right honestly that's the starting point we learned from the users we learned from feedback mm. and we thought okay if so many people are playing the european version of our game why not make an indian version and we know india better than anyone correct that's how we started but as we made the game like even, even in the process of making the game itself what we realized was mm. at least i think that this is very valid back in 2016 when we released mm. this didn't feel like a train game for india it felt like a game for india which happens to be a train game okay so anyone who enters the game mm. first feels this is india mm. rather than this is a train game you know you get that station announcement that's very nostalgic for everyone right whenever you hear that ding 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 sound mm. you know that that the announcement sound is so mm. i got mm. and that no, quickly makes you feel at home and you see people wearing sarees walking around in the stations mm. porters with their red uniform and that feels you make that makes you feel like you're home and then you then as a user you realize why i mean why didn't why didn't why was i not playing games which were made for it mm. i have grown up here i know how it works here why should i play in los angeles correct chennai or delhi correct so the, like how, why why like i mean we could argue hollywood makes really good quality movies but we watch bollywood mm. we watch tamil movies mm. because we like that localization okay. and that's what we realized that that, okay. that is the key and then you know we uh, went into developing a game which was again more focused on india and less of a train game and that worked really well for us yeah absolutely and you know you know i'm from a very very different generation you know i'm 67 years old and i know over the last 30 40 years i've often wondered why don't we have indian products coming out and i'm so proud that people like you are doing it now and this indian train simulator is available on android also yes it's uh, available both on android and ios so i'm going to download it and i'm going to play that game now thank you my next question to you gino is uh, how do you integrate all these new ai technologies into your products and what benefits do they bring to your own development when we speak about interactive content in general mm. first or most straightforward use of ai is in ai agents or what we call as cpu players mm. so again gaming industry has been unique in this way gaming industry has been using ai for the last 30 years extensively mm. it's very important for games mm. whether you play a racing game or a pac man you need ai to compete with you Correct. not always you play with other players when you play a single player game you need ai so luckily i was exposed to ai since i studied game game mm-hmm. engineering mm-hmm. early and i had to know it because we can't make games without knowing ai correct and that blended well when the ai revolution started you know this, uh, latest ai revolution mm-hmm. where we get processing power enough processing power to get things done and another synergy which people often don't understand of course game developers understand is the impact gpu has made for ai mm-hmm. in fact we should all thank the gaming community mm-hmm. for all the ai innovations we are getting today because nvidia is the key yeah If nvidia hasn't come out with the gpus which support large scale language model mm-hmm. process we wouldn't be having chat gpt right right so, uh, our understanding of gpus also help in uh, making much more efficient models mm-hmm. Uh, i mean the opposite of llms if you ask me you know those mm-hmm. are large, large scale do anything i know anything kind of ais mm-hmm. but what we do develop is power efficient energy efficient ais which can do exactly certain tasks but mm-hmm. really well. mm-hmm. so that's what we try to excel in wonderful and content generation is the second part first is the ai agent itself in the games industry content generation is something very new we call it procedural ai mm-hmm. where ai can generate visuals or help us create visuals or help us arrange the visuals 
while making games and that is what we have used in our in, in our latest game the truck simulator where we released with 100 cities where everything is procedurally built mm. like the roads is built on the fly the trees the environment you see the sky everything is decided by the ai based on conditions so mm. what we key in is the weather information basic information about the space and the ai will decide what to do fascinating fascinating my next question is how do you approach problem solving when you are faced with a technical hurdle whenever you are doing a simulation or a new development i think this is very much a case in medicine hmm uh, quite recently i have been uh, working full time in medicine and yeah. just advising the game side hmm. so here we have a lot of hurdles i mean to start with we made skill training for medical students that's how we started uh, developing hmm. but the moment i was able to go see how the students were consuming hmm. the content, i had a lot of things going on in my mind basically there were so many problems which i never expected mm. what i expected was softer problems where you know while using the experience might not be great ui might not be great maybe we need to teach them better maybe we need better onboarding so mm. that was the angle with which i went into the first university where we launched our product mm. so we basically set up a lab a vr lab and students come in like you know our computer labs mm. and they train on their medical procedures like mm. uh, catheterization or mm. vital plaguing uh what what i noticed was the problem was in the hardware not in the software mm. so the tabletop uh pc setups we are so used to, doesn't work for vr mm. because there's a lot of wire tangling going on and uh, medical students in specific they don't like to meddle a lot of technology mm. they are like using mouse keyboard and all that and then again putting it on top of the head it's too much for them mm. so i i had to again take one step back and uh, had to learn some hardware design mm. and I came up with a kiosk where the user experience was completely changed mm. it, i mean from the outside it looks like a small change but for the user it's a huge right, right. so we put a touch screen instead of, instead of a keyboard mouse setup and then the vr headset was hung from top rather than taking it from a table so there was no table there was it's more like a atm kiosk which has a headset hanging from the top so i think that is one of the biggest problems we solve mm. for the market not just for the company mm. even for uh, other vr companies coming up they can look at this and say okay this is the right way to do it mm. Mm. i am very proud of what we did there mm. fascinating and you know you since you're so deeply you know, involved in medical training simulation uh what do you see as the role of uh, uh you know ar and vr technologies uh in medical training simulation as these technologies become more mainstream the way we started medicine itself i think that is where the answer is dr adit when he spoke to us the way he convinced us rather was by saying his dad is a doctor his granddad is a doctor and he said we all three of us are trained in the same way mm. nothing has gone forward not much mm. and that is where the problem was we were able to catch the problem from shit man there okay and we as we know medical fraternity more than anything needs a lot of training and the error percentage needs to be minimum <clears throat> and <clears throat> and um that is where we also saw how uh, ar vr can help there Mm. if for, for example uh, there are two major things uh, major let's say advantages we can put in mm. one is the memory itself memory retention itself why do we say a more experienced doctor is better because mm. he has seen many cases mm. he knows what can go wrong he knows this can happen this cannot happen and to give students that head start a little bit of head start before they start practicing mm. we can use we are where they will believe that whatever they see in vr are almost like virtual real right. patients right and they can learn from these cases and understand better and they'll be more confident when they go out mm. that is one aspect the second aspect when you speak about ar or mr mixed reality coming in mm. so also the muscle memory coming in so we also use haptics to train on certain skills mm. certain skills are protocol driven whether it's step or understanding or knowledge certain skills which are muscle memory driven mm. so probably let's say when we get into surgery we'll be focusing more on that mm. so both visual 
plus muscle memory mm-hmm. i think these two areas if we could scale it up or make it uh, to a level where uh, it is close to reality mm-hmm. i think uh, we can see a huge reduction in errors and also a huge improvement in training speed itself mm-hmm. and i think especially this will help in nursing allied health uh, workers where there are not a lot of training methodologies available and we can't afford to let them train on patients as well correct great response thank you so do you know have time for two more questions my next question is uh, what is the most important lesson you have learned from a failure or a challenging project uh in again in medicine we are i think scale part i think we did misjudge it hmm. uh, especially from my part when we started making these skill training modules uh maybe because i'm a game developer we look at level design you hmm. know how many stages or how many different stages this can have hmm. uh, and we, i really underestimated how far this could go and uh, a few few years later i got that wake up call that, mm. you know what this is not going to end mm. with like 50 skills or 100 skills mm. this is going to go 1000 2000 3000 because there are so much to do there is so much to do and uh, geographically there are so many different things to do mm. there are diseases which are uh, there only in certain regions and there are protocols which are different region to region mm. this means cover it all we need to scale massively and that was a i would it's it's a great great wake up i wouldn't call it a failure but a huge wake up call we got i got in between mm-hmm. which made me change the whole approach of how we build this mm-hmm. so we went we went to a very different platform based approach now where scalability and deployment mm-hmm. was put on top of the wish list first mm-hmm. and that 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 has uh, made us much more confident today uh, having the ability to make hundreds of content mm. and able to deploy anywhere in the world sitting here and make able to make changes to it be it language or be it smaller protocol changes quickly has made us much more confident in hitting our targets fascinating fascinating and my last question to you <clears throat> gino as someone who knows gaming so well and who actually build a business out of your passion where do you see gaming in the next few years and how do you think this interactive simulation can contribute to making a world a better place i think gaming i think is the next natural step for movies if you ask me. okay and i think already that is happening netflix has interactive shows now Mm. or you can select what decision you make and the movie will go in that direction mm. and gaming has always been that and that is what is more the most fascinating about games is mm. where you decide what to do you are the protagonist in the your story mm. and that is why the gta series are so famous and uh, being one of the most sold and most revenue making series mm. Mm. uh that put, putting that in one bucket where as an entertainment product but when you say interactive simulation that goes mm. a lot Mm-hmm. right from learning how to drive a car to the pilot who is learning yeah. how to fly a flight mm-hmm. is all coming under that umbrella it's a mm-hmm. huge spectrum mm-hmm. and the more we push the boundaries in this industry and the more the companies come in and create products to make things better in terms of training i think the better it is for the world in all areas we'll be we'll have a safer more efficient more productive mm-hmm. and work in industries any tech any and uh, i think that is what interactive simulation is all about correct correct not just uh, entertainment correct and just to add one more line to what you said just now that you were saying about the medical training simulation that you'll bring it so close to reality that it'll probably reduce mistakes or minimize mistakes yeah but on and that we, note so sorry, sorry go ahead, sorry. Go ahead please go ahead uh we have around 3000 students in india training on our uh, platform now wow and i wanted to share the feedback they gave us mm. so that's what drives us to do correct so a lot of students they said we are 80% of them said we are happier or we are more confident in dealing with the patient now since mm. we are 
repeated it again and again. We have made the mistakes here. And the format we, with which we give them is we have something called a train mode. Hmm. Where they can train. It's, you, you, you can't do mistakes. We'll make sure you don't make mistakes. Right. And there's a free mode or evaluation mode where they can do what they want. They can hmm. make mistakes. Hmm. They can go crazy there. And we tell them this is where you made mistakes. So since they have done it 10 times, some, some students have done the same procedure 10 times, 15 times, still they get confident. And then when they go to the patient, they're very sure this is the procedure, this is how I have to do it. Mm-hmm. This is the documentation I have to do. Oh. That has made them very confident. Mm-hmm. And number two is what actually surprised us even more. This is what our goal was. But the surprising part was they said they're able to retain more memory for Viva. Wow. And so that was a bonus we got. And I mean, we didn't really expect that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, students are very happy with the product. And I think that is what has driven us so far. Mm. From starting with one university, now we are across five, six universities and thousands of students are there. And they still continue to give us feedback and we are still trying to make it better and better. Amazing. Amazing. You know, on that note, uh, I just want to say what an incredible conversation this has been from my perspective. You know, I think I've learned so many new things about gaming from you. I am going to now download as soon as I finish my conversation with you, your very, very famous and successful Indian train simulator and try it out myself. And hopefully that will introduce me at my age to gaming in a different way. Thank you so much for speaking to me about your own journey, about the way you are interacting with so many different people. Thank you for all the work that you are doing in your medical training simulation, supporting so many students. And thank you so much for sharing your own perspectives. Thank you again and good luck to you. Thank you so much uh, for for this great uh, podcast. I mean, uh, I think I have said more than what I thought I would say here because uh, the questions were so on point and it was nice having a chat with you. And I'd love to hear from you about the feedback of the game. I will do that. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.